Many downtown service providers and people who live on the street are reacting with shock and anger tonight. Homeless advocates say Mayor Dean Fortin and his council have proven they are serious about ending homelessness and do not deserve to be targeted. But some are coming to the vandals' defense. The homeless themselves, meantime, say they have nothing to do with the vandalism or the people behind it. A news reporter, Andrew Johnson, joins us with that part of the story. Andrew? Eric, homeless advocates in Victoria suspect the people who snuck into Dean Fortin's neighborhood overnight have likely never stayed in a downtown shelter or ever relied on social services. Reverend Al Tizik is a friend to Victoria's homeless, but he has no love for the person or people who crept onto Dean Fortin's property this morning and left their mark. I just felt it was a, a pretty cheap shot and a pretty scary shot uh, uh, to his family. We are continuing our conversation about the situation at the mayor's home this morning. Minutes later, Tissick and Phil Lyons from the Committee to End and Homelessness joined Stephen Andrew on CFAX 1070. People, when they're desperate, will do this sort of thing. When pressed by Andrew, Lyons says he doesn't know who launched the personal attack on the mayor, but appears to feel it should not have come as a surprise. So did he deserve this? I don't know whether he deserved it or not, but at one point, people who take that role in community have to expect that they're going to get some fairly strong feedback to it. Inside the new $13 million Rock Bay Landing shelter, the Victoria Kool-Aid Society's Don McTavish struggles with the vandalism as a parent. I have a family too, and the mayor has two children living in his home, of course, and he's a private citizen. I think that's just terrific, and frankly, it did, did an incredible disservice to any point, whatever group might have had. So it's a group of people that are angry, they're just using this as a, as a lever to put forward their own agenda, which is just general anarchy as far as I can tell. On the streets, the people who the group calling itself PG-72 claims it is fighting for say that's news to them. You cannot place the blame on homeless people. I've noticed some uh, preppies that go around and do stunts like this. I've talked to him quite a few times and he's done nothing but good for the homeless. And I don't understand, I don't understand why anybody would stoop that low. Now advocates hope the damage done here won't damage the public's perception of people who need help the most. Eric, the overwhelming message we heard today speaking to street people and homeless advocates is there is a recognition Mayor Fortin and Council are more focused than anyone who has come before them to solve homelessness in the capital and should be rewarded for it, not punished. Strange events. Andrew Johnson reporting. Thank you, Andrew. You're welcome. Now, while there has been a loss of temporary shelter mats and beds in the capital region, advocates for the homeless say there has been an overall increase in permanent services available to those in need thanks to the Greater Victoria Coalition to End Homelessness. The Victoria Kool-Aid Society says temporary beds and mats at the Divine Shelter, the Salvation Army and Streetlink uh, are now gone. That has resulted in a total loss of 85 spaces. However, the society says the number of permanent services went up November 1st, new spaces have opened up at Rock Bay Landing and Queen's Manor. 80 new permanent supportive housing units will also be opening next year. Additionally, up to 165 temporary shelter mats are available to be unrolled when the Victoria Extreme Weather Protocol is enacted.